welcome back in the previous session we were looking at uh, biologists tools and technology and we say that technology continually changes the way biologists work uh, then we went through imaging technologies we went through imaging I mean emerging technologies that provide new views of life. We looked at uh, the different types, the, the, the cutting edge uh, in science, and in this case, we looked at the, the microscopes. We looked at the different types of microscopes. We looked at uh, the light microscope, and we looked at the electron microscope. We looked at how each of the microscopes works and we looked at differences and so forth. So if you look at the pictures that we have here, we are having a picture which was taken from a transmission electron microscope. So if a, a trans transmission er electron microscope shows two dimensional images of a thin slice of a specimen and transmission uh, electron microscope is colorized by a computer so the bottom part of the image shows the original black and white image so uh, which is not uh, here uh, but it was it, this whole of this was black and white, but by use of, of course, uh, computers in, as uh, one of the magic technologies that makes things clearer, it has been made color so that it's easy to see. You can see that this is the stroma and these are the guard cells. These are the guard cells. So this is just but a single stroma. Here we are having what we see when we use a light microscope. When we are using a light microscope, you can see that it's even more clearer, even though the size looks to be small, but it's, uh, it is also clear. You can see that the stomata is very big here uh, in comparison to the first one. So light micros micrograph shows a two-dimensional image. So this one shows two-dimensional, this one also shows two-dimensional image of a specimen. This light micrograph shows the actual color. It shows the actual color of the, the specimen. We can take that as an advantage. The third one is the scanning electron micros micrograph. This is what we will get for scanning electron micrograph. It shows a three-dimensional image of specimens uh, surface uh, uh, and I mean a scan, a scan electron microscope is colorized by a computer it is also colorized by a computer the bottom of the part of the image uh, also in black and white shows the original color but as we put it in a computer a model we will make it even colored. In the next uh, thing that we are going to look at, emerging technologies provide new life, we will go into imaging, we will go into, uh, I mean imaging or medical imaging. So in medical imaging, in medical imaging, uh, which of course uh, could not have been discovered if people did not put much effort. When we are looking at medical imaging, the technology you is used to study tissue inside living humans. This technology, this technology, this technology is used is used to study. This technology is used to study. This technology is used to study uh, tissue. It is used to study tissue 
inside tissue inside it's used to study tissue inside living inside uh, living humans living humans the best example here is the x-ray so x-ray as you go to hospital you will always discover that uh, the doctors will always examine you after examining examine so they will examine you what we mean by examining is that they will observe you they will ask you questions uh, about what you are suffering from after that from your questions they will ask how it happened if it was an accident then they will make up recommendations like for example they can recommend you to have an x-ray uh, an x-ray uh, if, if a doctor wants to examine ligaments uh, and other tissues he will not use x-ray but if he wants to examine for example a bone if he wants to examine a bone or teeth or teeth what the doctors use is an x-ray so x-ray normally when it is uh, fired it does not uh, for example it will not show the tissues it will not show the tissues it won't show tissues uh, so it won't show tissues it will not show tissue so it passes through tissue but is able to show bones so it will reflect or show bones reflect or show bones so we can see the structures of the bone if the bone for example is uh, damaged or if it is broken then the doctor can see how he can fix that in the next uh, part if someone is suffering uh, into in uh, intense pains intense pain which is not due is not due is not due to a broken limb limb or damage to the bone then what happens in this case if it is the ligaments if it is the ligaments that are suffering or he had a, an injury in his ligament if he had injury in his ligament and it sores that is it's very painful like uh, you know on uh, on his knee like on his knee or any other part of the body what doctors will recommend is that the doctors will examine ligaments in a person by using what we call magnetic resonance imaging they will use magnetic resonance resonance imaging so they will use magnetic resonance imaging they will use magnetic resonance imaging which could be abbreviated as MRI which could be abbreviated as MRI MRI how does the MRI function that is the next question so question how it works MRI uses a strong magnetic field MRI uses a strong magnetic field it uses a strong magnetic field it uses a strong magnetic field to produce a cross section to produce a cross section image a cross section image to produce a cross section image of 
a part of the body of a part of the body of a part of the body a series of MRI images can be put together to give a complete view can be put to, together to put a complete view advances in technology advances in technology have led to new uses of MRI so we have new uses new uses of MRI new uses of MRI for example sorry MR I let me make it nearer because it's not very clear here sorry for that so the, the I mean use of new use of new MRI use of new MRI in this case for example example we will take an example here one good example is a functional MR, MR, MRI functional MRI functional MRI so functional MRI which could be abbreviated as F uh, I mean FMRI sorry for this which could be abbreviated as FMRI FMRI if I can show which areas of the brain are active while a person is doing a particular task can show which part of the brain which part of the brain is are active sorry are active which part of the brain are active while a person while a person is doing a particular task a particular task while a person is uh, using a particular tasks so with the emergence of uh, advance in technology we have come up we are able to observe tissues we are able to observe ligaments we are able to observe bones of our living organism complex systems can be modeled in a computer complex systems can be modeled in a computer the the picture here that you see is basically an x-ray of a human knee on this left part so this is an x-ray as you can see you will only observe the bone and in the next part we are having a dense tissues uh, such as a bone so an MRI of human knee right shows both soft and dense tissue in detail so this one will show both the soft tissues the ligaments it will show the tissues and it will also show the bones unlike in this case where we uh, I mean unlike in x-ray where we only see the bone and like so as we discussed earlier you saw that what x-ray does basically is to show the portion of the body in this case only the bone only the bone this has made the, the invisible invisibles to be visible if we could not it, if this was not discovered then we would not be behind in terms of technological advancement uh, with x-ray people were able to observe a portion 
of their body that is the bone and even with further investigations as I said earlier these new images came up as the introduction of MRI came into use. What we see here uh, is basically what is used to perform an, a scan or an MRI scan and this with these developments this can be taken into computers and images can be computed and then we come up with the results as important as the doctors might need them for the treatment of their patients. With these tools, uh, biology has been made also easy in terms of adm advancement. More discoveries and more discoveries are coming up. We have uh, the scan of the brain, we have the scan of tissues, so every other thing in our body, we can see it uh, without even the need of an operation. Before any operation is done, scientists have to ensure that there is a problem in the tissue before they can do that. Otherwise, previously, they would just make a guess, which was not very good for the person who would undergo an operation in, uh, I mean, with these guesses. But now, with the emerging technology, everything has been made easy. You could be able to see any portion of your skeleton. You can see if there are places which have any problem, it will also be displayed directly. It will also be displayed directly. In the next part, we have said complex systems are modeled on computers. Complex systems are modeled on computers. When we are talking of complex system, we mean here that technology has greatly expanded biological research. We mean that technology has expanded biological research. Technology has expanded 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 expa expanded biological research research so biological research has ex been expanded by the use of technology as computers uh, become faster and more powerful, biologists have found ways to use them to model living systems. So as, techno as computers as computers become as computers become uh, more powerful, more powerful, more powerful, biologists, 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 biologists have found ways to use them to model living systems. Uh, biologists have found ways, have found ways to have found ways to model living systems. To model living systems. Like, for example, we might take an example of ecosystems. We might take uh, examples of uh, biomes. We might take uh, an example of... So they will study any portion of a biological system. It may be within an organism or it may be a, an extent to the environment. So computer models simulate the interactions among many different variables. Computer models, computer, computer models, computer models simulate, computer models simulate, computer models simulate the interaction, simulate the interactions, simulate the interactions, 
simulate the interactions among many different variables, among many different variables, many among many different variables, among very many different variables, provide scientists with a general idea to provide to provide scientists provide scientists to provide scientists with uh, provide scientists with a general with a general idea with gen the general idea of how a biological of how a biological system works of how a biological system may work of how a biological system may work computers uh, can model complex systems within organisms for example how medicine might affect the body or effect of a heart attack so computer models can also help biologists study complex systems on a much larger scale. Epidemiology, uh, which is the study of how diseases are spread, can be, can be modeled on computers. So computer models are used where actual experiments are not safe, are not safe, and if not safe, if uh, actual uh, I mean, if actual, uh, mo they, so we can use models where we know that actual, where we know that actual experiments, actual experiments are not safe, are not safe are not safe, ethical, or even practical. So sometimes it is unethical, for example, for you to come up with something which you know will uh, bring a rift or a problem in the community. So in this case, instead of going into that scientists resort to computer models so the tool of the next thing that we will be looking at will be the tools of molecular genetics so we will have here a sample here we are having just a sample of uh, how computer models can be used look for example here here we are having a normal heartbeat and here we have a heart attack you can see how uh, these portions of red are widely spread within this heart attack. So this tells you, this from this model, we are able to know that someone is really suffering. This computer generated model shows that heart uh, activity that is in red is tightly regulated during a normal heartbeat. But during an attack or a heart activity is widely spread and disorganized. So you can see from this, this is a normal one. They are just uh, localized and very organized. But here, the whole thing is disorganized and you can tell that we have a problem here. So what are some of the reasons why biologists uh, use computer models? As we said, computer models are used when actual experiments are not safe, ethical, or perhaps practical. Next thing that we are going to look at is uh, next thing that we are going to look at is the tools of molecular genetics give rise to new biological studies. So perhaps the greatest leap forward in our knowledge of life 
has happened in genetics. Perhaps uh, the biggest leap in our life so uh, has happened in genetics. So in this case, we will be talking about uh, some of the developments in genetics, some of the developments in genetics. So from the proposition of uh, Charles Darwin of uh, having what he called natural selection whereby traits, traits are passed from parent to offspring, from parent to offspring, parent to offspring. So when Charles Darwin came up with these theories, he did not even know uh, that this really happens, but it was just a proposed idea. But with the development of genetics, with the development of genetics, genetics can be used as a proof that really uh, information or genes, I mean our genes are the ones which pass traits. So if genes, of, if genes are passing traits, if genes are passing traits here, so genes, sorry, Genes. Genes are the ones which carry traits. Genes carry specific traits in genetics. So these traits are carried or are found in the DNA. So a gene is basically a segment of a DNA that stores generic information. So a segment a segment of the DNA, segment of the DNA, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> that stores, that stores genetic information, that stores genetic information, that stores generic information, that stores genetic information. It has led to many unimaginable information. So the development of uh, genetics has really led to many unimaginable information. As we continue uh, observing, in four years from the first genetic code works to changing genes, to implanting genes from one system to another, and so forth, so with the emergence, or I mean with the emergency of molecular biology, with the emergency of molecular biology, even things went deeper or further into a new era. So with the emergency of molecular, with the emergency of molecular genetics, with the emergence of molecular genetics, which is the study and manipulation of DNA, which is the study, which is the study and manipulation, and manipulation, the study and manipulation, which is the study and manipulation of DNA, of D. On a, on a molecular level, on a molecular level. By molecular level here, uh, we can use this process to study. So this process of molecular genetics have been used in uh, studying the environment, for example. So it has been used or useful in studying the uh, environment in studying the environment in studying the environment 
ecology ecology apart from ecology biochemistry 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 and many other areas of biology and many other areas and many other areas so and many other areas of biology entire new areas of biology have arisen from a combining molecular genetics which com with computer uh, uh, technology e.g. the use uh, i mean used to find dna sequences so the entire new area of biology have arisen from combining molecular genetics with computer technology and that is uh, finding the dna sequence finding the dna sequence which of course as per now is well known by scientists then we have another part of this which is genomics which is genomics so another emerging uh, technology is genomics which is the study of the comparison which is which is the study which is a study which is a study and comparison which is a study and comparison of genomes of genomes of genomes both within and across species both within and across species so what we mean here is again uh, scientists would need maybe computers to study this by the process called data mining 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 scientists are able to come up with uh, information so here we are having data mining so with uh, data mining with data mining uh, a biologist can find patterns, uh, similar similarities and differences. So, a biologist can find patterns, differences, and similarities. and similarities uh, for example suppose a biologist identifies a molecule that prevents the growth of cancerous cell so suppose for example a biologist discovers suppose suppose a biologist suppose a biologist suppose a biologist discovers a gene so suppose this is just but an example a gene or a molecule that prevents cancerous cancerous cells or cancerous tumors so you have come up with a gene or a chemical or a molecule that is able to stop 
cancer from developing. Then this biologist, using the chemical that he has found, he can use a computer uh, database. He can use a computer database to find similar, to find, for example, similar chemicals which are found maybe in the market, maybe in the market. The reason being maybe this one might be, this chemical might be very expensive and people could not afford it. But if we have another one that can do the same or can do the same work, then it will be easy for people to get medication and be treated and it will be the saving of lives. It will be saving of lives. Uh, we will stop here and we will progress, I mean we will continue in the next video.